Hey everybody and welcome back to the Corp Stat Chat. This is episode two. Where we're going to talk about some history. So history buffs out there, I hope that you like this video. Um, if you're not a history buff, I hope that you like this video anyway. Uh, so just as a reminder, this is the hashtag Corp Stat Chat. Remember, you can tweet me on Twitter with the hashtag, hashtag Corp Stat Chat. Um, or you can send me an email jcorbettysteryork.net or just leave a comment underneath this video for another topic that you'd like me to talk about. The reason that we're going to talk about the history of statistics is so we can see the evolution of stats throughout time, which is really, really neat and a really cool concept. So we're going to go way back to the 1600s. We're going to talk about the this uh, time period um, in which we're going to talk about three guys in particular, which is going to be Pascal, Grant, and Huygens. Sorry if I mispronounced all of your names, but uh, you're not going to hear me because you are dead. So well, let's go on. So these guys really laid the foundation work for probability and statistics and contributed some really neat stuff to, to the discipline. But as a disclaimer, I need to state that statistics goes back way further than just these guys. Uh, we can go back to uh, the Chinese, where they talked about the Chinese triangle, which is going to stem into Pascal's triangle of uh, binomial coefficients, which we'll get to in a little bit. But we can also go back to Cardan, which is from the 1550s, and his concept of probability within dice games. Uh, but the problem here was he's not really accredited with this discovery of the probability of chance because they lost his manuscript. Yeah, they lost his manuscript with all this stuff about probability and chance. So stinks for him because they found it 100 years later and he can't be really accredited with this because people during that 100 year time span uh, found out this stuff too. So sorry, Cordan, can't help you out. But let's go on to our men of the hour or men of the couple minutes that we're going to talk about. So let's start out with our good buddy Pascal, which have a uh, picture of him right here, um, a selfie of Pascal. You know, these things took about 12 hours to make, um, so that's some serious, serious focus on the selfie. Uh, so give him props. But anyway, this is Pascal. Um, he was a mathematician and uh, just a, a, a really influential part um, when he was younger, especially, uh, he started getting into mathematics at the age of 12, um, really started to have a really firm grasp of all this, and uh, he was recognized as one of the forerunners of mathematics. And you can also, you probably also have heard of Pascal's triangle, um, but I'm sorry to burst your bubble. Again, he's not the first one to come up with this triangle. He's just the first in Europe to have a definitive reasoning behind it. Um, but, you know, we'll give him props for that. So Pascal's triangle, this is the guy. So everybody say hi to Pascal. Hey, Pascal. Hi. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not a ventriloquist. Apologize. Now, Pascal had a pen pal. Now, I don't have a picture of his pen pal, um, but you can search his name online. And I'm, probably, uh, I'm sure that you've probably heard of him already. Fermat. So Pierre de Fermat. Um, he was good buddies with this guy, and what they started doing was over the summer of 1654, they started writing letters back and forth. So a series of these five-letter correspondence between the two um, started to talk about these two problems that hinged on the fundamentals of chance and probability, which you know is what we send texts about all the time. It's just mathematical theories and principles. Oh, duh. But this guy and Fermat um, started sending these messages back and forth, and the two questions here were, the first question was, how many times must one throw a pair of dice before one can expect to get double sixes? And the second being the stakes problem, which stated, how shall the stakes be divided if a game of dice is abandoned while incomplete? So the first one is really interesting because this is something that we um, teach at, at a very young age is what's the probability of dice? So rolling two die um, or two dice, uh, what is the probability of rolling two twos or three twos or, well, that's impossible. Scratch that one. Rolling like a five and a six or rolling a four and a three. So what's the probability of that? And that, that really stems, and this is the front of that exploration. And this guy is the one who um, sort of discovered this along with Fermat. And so the, the first question that they're addressing here is the double sixes probability. There, the, and there was this expectations to come with play with the introduction of making conjectures or inferences based on statistics of play. Now the first involves binomial coefficients, which are diagrammed by Pascal's triangle. So he, he took his triangle 
and um, related it to probability and the, the expectations of chance. Pascal went on uh, further to introduce the concept of expectation and discuss the problem of gambler's ruin, among other advancements in statistical analysis and the theory of probability. So we owe a lot of props to this guy right here, um, and uh, we can talk about how he's going to influence some other people later on in history and how this is the start of what we know today as probability and statistics. Now moving on, say bye to uh, this guy and we're going to introduce this guy. And first of all, check out that hair. I mean, what conditioner is this guy using? Seriously, let's get our hands on it. Let's talk to him. But we can't because he's dead. But let's talk about the statistical um, advancements that he made and what he contributed to the science and study of mathematics. So Christian Huygens, this is this guy, um, he was a mathematician again. Um, he also studied uh, various other uh, sciences and he actually went to the Academy of Sciences in France um, and this is where he first published his book on probability called The Value of All Chances in the Game of Fortune. Um, he built on the ideas of Fermat and Pascal, who encountered who he encountered in France, and much of his book is devoted devoted to calculating various values or expectations of the game of chance. So this guy met Fermat and met Pascal, talked about a few things, figured that this was out, and he wrote about it. He made a book. So he took Fermat's and Pascal's idea, wrote it down. So that's what he's attributed with. So. Um, this game of chance or the expect, expected values is called mathematical expectation um, and that's what he wrote about in his book. So he, we can attribute him to not only a really cool hairstyle but mathematical expectation in the game of chance. So from his book, The Value of All Chances in the Game of Fortune. So really cool and you'll actually see that um, they all tie into each other. All three of these guys really tie into them uh, history wise. So we'll talk about the next guy now. This is John Grant, and what he is attributed with is being the father of descriptive statistics, which is a really cool title and a really cool way to um, describe what he actually did, which, which he came up with population statistics, which isn't a new thing because statistics was actually um, sort of developed to help rulers rule over the land back in the day. But it wasn't really given a name, it wasn't really given a concept until this guy came along, John Grant. So he, again, um, came up with a whole, whole, this whole idea of population statistics um, from the idea that people were dying from plagues, from famine, from whatever. And we have to get an idea in London how, how many people are actually there, how many people are living, females, males, whatever, young, old. So trying to get this first census idea to come into play. And the cool thing about this, about all the founding fathers' statistics, is that it was such a collective effort. So we have probability and probability and uh, game theory over here uh, from these two, and then this guy over here comes up with the descriptive. Um, statistics, which is population statistics, which we do a lot in this course. So John Grant was our sort of our oddball, though, because his resume was a little bit different um, than the other two. The other two were very well versed. Uh, they they went to they went to college. They knew a lot of stuff. They were teaching this stuff. Um, but John Grant was just a local shopkeeper in London. Didn't really know a lot until he taught himself mathematics. Yes, he sat in a room, taught himself math. Um, and he ended up going on to write, uh, publish a paper entitled uh, Natural and Political Observations Made Upon the Bills of Mortality. So this whole idea of life in general, and he came up with population statistics. This is the first known paper to use data, data to draw on statistical inferences. So making conjectures, making this um, educated guess on how many people were living. Uh, so he, his work involved observations and predictions in the mortality rates of individuals in London, which he portrayed in um, this table, which is called the London Life Table, which outlines this perfectly. It was the first time that we're really uh, displaying statistical um, analysis as well. So we're displaying this data that we collected in the London Life Table, and it was huge for the time because he was able to estimate the total population of London and the rate at which it would increase or decrease based on statistics he collected over a 10-year period. Um, his work would go on to spark interest from 
this guy, who expanded on this guy's work, right? So they all sort of intertwined and intermixed each other um, with their ideas and concepts. And that's why these guys would turn out to be monumental to the growth and exploration of statistics in the many decades to come. Um, so that was sort of a brief little snapshot of the 1650s to the 1700 uh, sort of time period. So that 50 year span, this is what was going on. And I hope you really enjoyed this little brief history lesson and got to meet our three gentlemen of this episode because they are very monumental in the start of statistics. Um, so thanks for watching. This has been episode two of Corp Stat Chat. I'm going to be back again tomorrow. Uh, where, where we talk about uh, various parts of statistics. We're not going to go into history a little bit uh, or too, at, at all really tomorrow, um, but we will talk about uh, just the basics and fundamentals of statistics in general and the vocabulary and keywords that we're going to be using. Um, so remember to like and subscribe this to uh, my YouTube channel, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and then also hop onto Twitter, follow me at Mr. J Corb, um, and uh, give me a shout out on there by using the hashtag, hashtag CorbStatChat, so you can give me some ideas for future videos. So hopefully again, you like this, I'm trying to do something a little bit new this semester, and I uh, can't wait to hear what you think. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.